Hello everybody, Wolfpack here and welcome to some IL-2 Battle of Stalingrad. Today we're going to be taking a quick look at the P-47D Thunderbolt, which was recently added into the game in the new patch along with the uh, BF-109K4. Now the P-47D here is the first American plane added in the new expansion, so uh, there's a lot of hype around it. And there's a lot of hype around it to begin with because there hasn't really been a proper P-47 um, in aisle 2. Uh, the old one in 1946, well, it's, it's not very good, <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Uh, the cockpit's uh, pretty crummy looking and everything. Um, they didn't really do it justice, but I can say that this new team definitely has done it justice. So we'll go ahead and hop in it. I'll do a quick circuit around the airfield, and then we'll uh, go do some, we'll go blow up a train or something later. And I'll show you all the armament options that you can take with this plane. And it is really big. If we zoom up right up close and personal, you can see how massive this plane is. And, uh, and this doesn't even do it justice. In real life, like I've seen them in museums and such, and it is quite impressive. And quite, <laughs> it's pretty crazy how big it actually is. You don't really realize it until you see one. But anyway, I have the Snorting Bull skin on, as you can see. Uh, this one's probably one of my favorite ones in the new pack. I just think the black and the chrome looks pretty awesome. Alright, so let's go ahead and head into the cockpit here. And I'll go ahead and uh, start up our engine. And I will talk while we do that. Oh boy. And as you can see, uh, the cockpit's a little intimidating. The Americans seem to like writing warnings on everything. Uh, <laughs> uh, here we have our, uh, our turbocharger. Oh geez, my track R is goofing up turbocharger, and I'll explain that in a little bit, uh, to my best knowledge. Uh, we have, oh my god, I don't know why my track IR is messing up now. We have our airspeed indicator, bank indicator, climb, RPM, and uh, um, more our oil temperatures and fuel gauges over there. And we have manifold pressure, which is squiggling a little bit there, as our engine starts up. Let's make sure my, uh, okay. All right, and our throttle quadrant is something that's a little interesting now. So there we have our throttle, and then we also have our supercharger down there. Here, let me adjust. Let's see. Hopefully, let me reset my track R real fast. See if that will fix this problem because that's quite annoying. But we have our supercharger, our and our throttle, and then we also have our war emergency power there, which I can't turn on right now for I guess because the plane's still starting. But with all this, we can actually link it, link our throttles together. Let's uh, bring up the UI again. See, uh, turbo lever is released and turbo throttle prop. But now they're interconnecting. And whenever I throttle up, it'll throttle up all together, which is pretty fun and pretty nifty. We also have our, uh, our cow shutters up there. We can close those a little bit as we prepare for takeoff. You can also equip your plane with the gyro sight, but I've decided against that for today. We'll just go with our standard sight here. And also, you have the little bank indicator right there by the gun sight, which I really like. That's a nice feature. So that little red light next to the turbine overspeed uh, thing. Um, so whenever your turbine is overspeeding, it'll be solid red, unless that gauge is at zero. So if the gauge is at zero, it'll be solid red, but and if it's not, it'll be uh, blinking slowly. And generally you want it to be blinking or at zero. And if it's solid red, that means you're in, uh, you're in bad shape. You need to look at, take a look at that. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and uh, lower flaps a little bit and get ready for takeoff. I've been lowering them to about 35 and that seems to be doing me just fine. I am by no means an expert for uh, uh, I guess that's fairly obvious and there we have our four 50 caliber machine guns they even uh, numbered them which is I guess a nice feature see this plane has labels for everything which I like um, a lot of the planes don't so pretty nifty and there's our radio call it's 777 I think that's a little uh, throwback to the old the team that used to work on Rise of Flight was 77 Studios or 777 Studios, my apologies for goofing that up. Anyway, all right, so we should be good. Check our mixture. All right, I'll lean that. 
go to 100 and uh, let's go ahead and start throttling up as you can see as we throttle up our turbo supercharger uh, goes up as well and man I just love the sound of this engine it sounds really awesome and the planes fairly easy to uh, keep on the runway you just got to apply a little bit of right rudder and let's go ahead and rotate and we are up gear up and flaps up as well we can go ahead and throttle back a little bit and as you can see there the turbo to overspeed is just blinking and when I throttle back it'll start to wind down all right landing gear retracted awesome Now this plane was originally intended by the United States Army Air Corps to be a high altitude interceptor and it did that for a while but then eventually uh, they realized it's a very stable gun platform and they <laughs> you can put a lot of armament on it including bombs and rockets and it turned into a very effective ground pounder which is probably what I will end up using it for the most, especially in the scenario with the new expansion. Uh, the, the Germans have quite a bit. Seem to have the fighter edge on the P-47. Like the K-4 is uh, pretty pretty brutal, if I'm going to be honest. So, But it is a very renowned plane. It ended up flying in both theaters, both the uh, European theater and in the Pacific. And it had a about a, a maximum range of about 800 miles. So. It, it had some legs though that's almost half of the uh, p51's range which just goes to show you how insanely far the p51 could go all right so we're just going to go ahead and loop back around here the plane is very stable uh, it's a little sluggish but it, it doesn't do anything too wacky whenever you uh like the rudder is nice and nice and smooth, honestly. I have had no issues with controlling this plane. It's pretty easy to fly, honestly. It's not too quirky. Um, I will say it is pretty easy to stall if you get too aggressive with your maneuvers. So you just need to watch out on that. All right, we'll go ahead and just turn over these here suburbs. Man, this cockpit offers great visibility as well uh, this bubble canopy probably the reason they had it wouldn't you think all right where's our runway it's back over there all right so I've only landed the plane a handful of times a couple of times it actually was released uh, I guess yesterday now so I have been flying this one the most I hopped in the K4 a bit I flew that around they're both pretty quick uh, at sea level just really gunning it and also you have your your boost oh I guess my boost was on I didn't mean for my boost to be on that might explain a little bit whoa whoa what the hell is shooting at us all right well we're damaged and we're going down <laughs> I wasn't expecting to be shot at apparently there was a flak 38 anti-aircraft gun there so I will go ahead and uh, reload and uh, land the bird for y'all. Okay, so we're coming up on our runway here. Let's go ahead and throttle back a tad bit. And let's get ready for our landing. So let's go ahead and uh, lower flaps. Just a tad. And we need to nose down a bit. Our plane keeps wanting the nose up. All right, let's throttle back some more gear down as we approach the runway uh, hopefully I uh, touch down all right our plane is shaking kind of violently as our gear comes down I'm not a fan of that let's go ahead and open the canopy just in case we need to uh, hop out <laughs> from the burning heap all right slow down all right she's coming down nicely all right got a pretty heavy bounce there I was probably coming in a tad too fast but I'm sure that bounce killed off a good chunk of airspeed all right all right and we're good kind of overshot a tad bit 
All right, using brakes to uh, slow down. Come on, girl. Yeah, our plane. Let's go ahead and use this energy to kind of loop around. All right. Well, that could have gone a lot worse. Could have gone a little bit better, but uh, at least we're alive. And there we are. Uh, my skin reset since I uh, crashed and burned the first time. So uh, there is that. But hey, nice and easy. All right, so I'll go ahead and uh, get out and show you guys all of the different types of loadouts you can take with this plane. And uh, we'll go ahead and uh, do some ground pounding. Also, the new pilot model is looking fabulous. The uh, devs did a really good job with this plane and this patch. This patch is pretty awesome. I've been uh, playing it for quite a while now. So anyway, I'll go ahead and uh, see you guys on the other side. Here we are in the hangar and let's go ahead and go to the modification screen. So as per usual with uh, planes with 50 caliber machine guns, you can choose to take uh, six or four. Uh, I'm going to stick with eight. <laughs> eight's just too awesome to give up. And honestly, what what's you're losing, you're not losing that much weight when your plane weighs almost eight tons. So honestly, taking the additional ammunition for the eight machine guns, uh, I don't think really, uh, like estimated speed loss is one kilometer an hour if you take the extra machine gun ammo. And especially if I'm doing ground pounding, I think that is definitely worth it. You can also take a gyro gun sight. Uh, you can also take the fixed loop radio compass, um, which is one thing I found an issue with uh, real fast. I'll show you. Um, it's one of the bugs I think I found with the game or with the new patch. You can also take a mirror, which it can be helpful for finding those sneaky 109s trying to bounce you. And the real meat and potatoes of this plane is the ground attack modifications. Let's go ahead and open that up. And you have a whole bunch. So you can take a uh, 500 pound bombs, two, three, or two 1,000 pound bombs, but the really crazy one, and you can also take uh, M8 4.5 inch rockets, and you can, this is the, this is the crazy one. So you can take your extra ammo, two 1,000 pound bombs, one 500 pound bomb, and then six 4.58, 4.5 inch rockets. So let's go ahead and open that. We'll, we'll take off with this one, because it's crazy. All right, so we have our bazooka type launchers here, which are pretty cool all in themselves. And then we have the two 1,000 pound bombs strapped on the wings, and then the one 500 pound bomb on the belly. Uh, I will say, when you drop your bombs one by one, and you have just one 1,000 pound bomb on one wing, uh, the plane can be a little difficult to fly. <laughs> um, having that balance, uh, like that having the plane balance like that is uh, not very good it's it's a little frustrating but it is doable as I'll show you also you can take uh, 1400 liters uh, we don't need that much fuel we'll probably take probably not even let's just take 300 liters of fuel it's not like we're flying across the channel or anything like that we're not doing anything crazy we're just gonna go blow up some trains and pretend we're in Italy all right so Oh, and with the radio receiver, it, it looks like uh, it's not skinned right. It looks like it's just the normal 3D model without any skinning because it's kind of ugly. So we're going to take that off because it is it distracts me. That's that's the issue. That's the bug I found. I'm sure by the next patch it'll be fixed. I'll post something on the forums. Let the devs know. All right, so let's go ahead and accept, and I'll see you guys whenever we are in the proximity of an enemy train. Okay, so there's the enemy train right off our left wing. I'm gonna go ahead and wait to engage until he's kinda out of this little forest area. Then I'll go ahead and drop my bombs right on him. So we'll go ahead and uh, loop around here. And follow the train tracks down and then just drop our bombs. And hopefully disabling the locomotive so he's not moving. And we will go ahead and uh, strafe him with rockets and machine guns. That is obviously the plan. So let's go ahead and enable our boost here, even though we probably don't need to. So I would not really recommend this loadout, though. The plane is extremely sluggish with it, as you would expect with so much ordnance attached to your plane. It's insane, but I'm not a fan of it. I would probably take the rockets and maybe, uh, maybe one bomb. But not all of this. All of it's a little excessive. Alright, looks like we might need to kind of uh, wait a little longer. Yeah, let's go ahead and loop back around one more time. 
I just don't want to attack prematurely. I'm sure he does have uh, anti-aircraft guns on, on the train, which can rip into us and cause some damage. I'd rather avoid damage, even though we are in a jug. Can't say I'm too worried about damage, but it is something I'd rather not, uh, <laughs> rather not take unnecessarily. All right, so we're looping back around. He's in the clearing now. He's in a prime location to go ahead and attack. So we will go ahead and do that. All right. Prepare to drop our bombs. Put my finger on the trigger as we dive down. All right. Bomb one away. Two, three. All right. Hopefully that does it. Bam! Right, got him right smack in the middle. Oh, but his guns are really ripping into us, however. And wow, just without those bombs, our plane is uh, responding much, much better. We did take quite a few hits, though. Um, looks like we got a hole in that, our right wing. Oh, our left wing is pretty chewed up. But we're still flying. We're still doing just fine. I think the locomotive is... Yeah, there we go. All right, bombs did quite a bit of damage there. Now, I am worried about the rest of the the anti-aircraft guns which seem to be the only thing that probably survived down there so let's go ahead and uh, let them have a taste of our rockets shall we startle down as we go down for our strafing attack so I think this little uh, V looking sight is for the rockets alright got him pull up Ooh, that was really close all right, so I think that's a train dealt with. We'll loop around and see what our 50 cals can do. If there's anything left of it, to be honest. I think that train's pretty much been dealt with. Man, this, this plane is awesome for our ground pounder. It is very stable. And the rockets are really nice, too. They fly uh, nice and straight for quite a long time, compared to the Russian rockets, which kind of just go down right as they leave the wing all right let's see what's going on down here all right looks like there's maybe a couple more cars down there yeah I think they're all dealt with I think that train is uh, a goner all right well that is that I don't know if there's anything else to really do let's go ahead and just discharge the rest of the rockets for fun which was one one rocket and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, head home. Oh, we destroyed the train gondola. How about that? Well, folks, uh, that is the P-47D Thunderbolt, or the Jug, as it's commonly called. It's a pretty awesome aircraft. I'm definitely enjoying flying it. It's probably the, my favorite aircraft so far with the new expansion. Which they've only released about four of them, I believe. So, but still, this is awesome. It's glad I'm glad to finally have some. Uh, more American planes in the game. And I think this is a good thing ultimately for IL-2. Um, bringing American planes to the game will bring a whole new fan base to do it as well. So more people playing the game is always good. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, uh, go ahead and leave a like and all that jazz. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys next time.